Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build a Divi notification box for COVID-19 updates. And also, this is a free download. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let me show you how to build this. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to add a section to the layout library. So I'm going to come over here to Divi and then I'm going to go into the Divi library. So I'm going to go to Divi library and this is where we're going to add so right now here on our layouts we can see we have this in fact you know what let me just get rid of this so we can start from scratch all right so on our layouts here we need to click on add new and we need to give this a layout name so let's call this a notice section so here on the layout type we want this to be a section so i'm going to go ahead and select that and this shouldn't be a global so let's hit submit Right, so let's start building this layout. So we can either design this from here. But you know what? I prefer building this on the front end. So I'm going to click here on build on from front end. So the first thing we need to do here is to go into our section settings. So I'm going to click here on uh, this gear icon. So here we need to add our colors. So I'm going to come over here to background. And this is where you can choose whatever colors you want for your gradient. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. And pretty much I'm going to leave this as it is and perhaps maybe just make a slight change to this like that. So that's going to be my color. So the next thing we need to do is to add our section padding. So I'm going to come over here to design, click on spacing. And here on the padding, I'm going to set this to zero. And this needs to be applied to both sides. OK, so now that I have my padding, the next thing I need to do now is to add my section CSS ID and to do that we need to head over here to advanced and click on CSS ID and classes so here we need to add our CSS ID as notice section so I'm going to go ahead and add it like that and then save okay so what we've done so far is we've added a background color here and this is the gradient and we also went in and added the padding, which was zero, both to the top and the bottom. And then finally, we added our CSS ID. The next thing now is to add our columns. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button, add a single column. So the next step now is to head over to my row settings. And here we need to go into design and set our sizing. So our maximum width here is going to be 700 pixels. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it here and then save. Next, I'm going to add my text module. So I'm going to go ahead and search for it. And here it is. So this is what's going to have our notification. So I'm going to go ahead and add my notice. So I'm just going to hover over this, just get rid of that. So this is going to be a heading. So I'm going to set this to heading two. And then I'm also going to add just normal paragraph text. So that's going to be my basic paragraph text. Now let's go in and design this text. So I'm going to click here on this design tab. So I'm going to start here with the text. So we're going to uh, change our text font. So I'm going to come over here and this is going to be cabin. So I'm going to search for my font. It's called cabin. I'm going to select it. Now, as you can see, it's uh, quite difficult to read. So before I can go in and change my colors and everything, I just want to make sure that my sizes are correct. So I'm going to set this to 18 make it slightly bigger. And then I'm also going to align this text to the center. So I'm going to scroll down here until I find center. All right, so everything is aligned now. The next step now is to go to my heading two. So here, in fact, while here I'm on text, let's change our text color because right now it is dark. So I'm going to change it to light. So now we can read everything much easier. So let's uh, customize our heading two text size. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change my size to 46 and my line height to 1.3. OK, so that's looking much, much better now. So let's go ahead and save. And then we're also going to add two columns, two equal columns here. Now let's go into the row settings, click on design. And here we need to adjust our maximum width. So I'm going to go to sizing and go to maximum width. And we're going to change this to 600 and save. Next, we're going to add our call to action button. So I'm going to search for my button module. I'm going to select that. So that button is going to go to column one. And I can just name this whatever I want. So let's just call this learn more. And here it is very important that you add your button URL. In my case, I'm just going to add a blank link. 
Now it's time to go in and customize this button to make it really stand out. So I'm going to click here on design alignment. So first of all, I'm going to click on center and then I'm going to come over here to button and activate use custom styles for button. All right, so let's start with the text color. We're going to set this to white. So now it's easier to read. And then we also need to set our background color. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit, click on this plus button. And this is the color that we're going to use. And uh, as you can see, it has an ugly border. So let's go and get rid of it by just dragging this until I see zero. And also to keep this consistent, we want to make sure that we're using the same font that we used earlier on, which is cabin. So there we go. And we really want this to stand out. So let's make this bold. All right, so now our button looks great. Now, in order for the button to span the full width of the column, you need to add the, follow, the following CSS to the main element. So let's head over here to advanced, custom CSS, and here in the main element, I'm just going to add this. And now you can see the button has spanned the whole uh, width of this column. So that's looking great. Now, this CSS code is going to be in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and save. So since we're going to have two buttons here, I'm just going to duplicate this and drag this over here to the second column. So now we have two identical buttons. Okay, so now I'm going to go into this one here, change the text. So this one here is just going to say, got it. Now let's go into the design button and let's change our button text color. So for our button text color here, it's currently set to white. We're going to change this like that. And then we also need to change our button background color. So this time our button background color is going to have some transparency. So I'm going to drag the second slider down here. In fact, I'm on the wrong one. I need to go to the button background. If you click anywhere here, drag the slider down a little bit and then paste the values between the brackets just like that. Okay, so now you can see the color of the background has changed. So that's looking great. So the next step now is to add the button CSS class. Now for this button, we're going to add this class because we want to target the button later with code needed to collapse or close the notification box. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to come over here to advanced. And since we need to add a CSS class, I'm going to come over here to CSS ID and classes and add my class over here. Okay, so that's the class you need to add. And then we're going to save. The next step now is to create a notification box close icon. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and we're going to add a single column. Now, before I make any changes to any modules, I'm just going to close this, go into my row settings, and then I'm going to go into design. So first of all, my width here is going to be 100%. So I'm going to come over here, drag this all the way to 100%. Our maximum width also needs to be 100%. So I'm going to add that. Now it's time to adjust our padding. So I'm going to click here on spacing and both the top and the bottom is going to be zero pixels. Now notice that I'm using this chain icon. That's because I want to apply the same value both to the top and the bottom. All right. So now that I've added that, we need to add a blurb module. So I'm going to close this, click here on this plus button and search for my blurb and select it. Okay. So now that I have my blurb, we are going to look for an icon here. So I'm just going to scroll. In fact, you know what? Before I even do all of that, we need to delete all this dummy text here. So I'm going to get rid of that. We also need to get rid of the title here. So all I have now is the image, which we're going to change into an icon by coming over here. So let's activate use icon. Now I just need to look for an X, which is right here. Okay, so that's my icon that I'm going to use. Now let's just uh, stylize this by coming over here to the design tab. Let's go to uh, image and icon and change our color here to white. And then we also need to adjust the size of the icon. So I'm going to come over here to use icon font size. And I'm going to set this to 40 because right now it's a bit too big. Right. So width and height also needs to be 40. So I'm going to scroll down here to sizing. And for our width here, I'm going to set this to 40 pixels and I'm going to do the same to the height. Now we need to position the icon. Now this is very, very important. So let's head over here to the advanced tab position and the position style we need here is absolute. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. So we want to change the, uh, the positioning here to the top right. So you can see here the icon is right there. 
So I would need to just rearrange this and make sure it's at the top corner here of this section. All right, so now that I have that, so I also need to add my offset. So it's gonna be 20 on the vertical and 20 on the horizontal. Okay, so now that I have this all set, we're now going to add our blurb icon CSS. So while we're here on the advanced tab, I'm gonna click on CSS ID and classes. And then on the class here, I'm going to add close notice. Okay, so that's very important. So now that I've added that, I'm going to save. And um, I just need to make sure that this row here is at the top. So I'm just going to drag it all the way to the top. And now you can see my X is up there in the top. All right, great. So for all this to work, I need to add a code module. So I'm just going to come over here, click on this plus button and search for code. I want to select it. And this is where I'm going to add my code. All right. So this code that I'm going to add here can be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So I want to go ahead and add it just like that. So this is looking good. I'm going to go ahead and save this and I'm going to save it one more time here. All right, so now let's look for a page on our site and add it on there. So I'm just going to open a new tab here and just go to an existing page. So let's go to all pages and I'm just going to go to, let's say, this photography page. Click on edit, edit with the DV Builder. So what we're going to do now is to insert a brand new section. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. Now, remember, we created this design and added it to the library. So I'm going to click add from library. And this is where we have the notice section that we've been working on. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And here it is. So here's our notice. But ideally, we want this on the top. So we're just going to rearrange things here a little bit and have it here on the top. In fact, let me just grab this one here. It's easier that way. All right, so we now have our notice here on the top. So now I'm going to save this page. I'm going to exit the Visual Builder. Okay, so here's our notice. So I can also come over here and close it. Now, let's say you want to add this to all the pages on the website. This is where you can go into the templates and just add it to pretty much as a global or you can add it to specific pages on your website. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.